Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make snow in Photoshop. Uh, it's super easy and I can take you from getting a picture like this to this. All right, let's just jump right in and get started. So I'm gonna use two different methods. Um, one is using noise to make the snow, the other is making a custom brush, so you're gonna learn a lot. First, we'll make a new layer. We'll go to Edit, Fill, Black, make sure black is selected, and OK. Next, we'll go to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. So you can see this is colorful. We want to make sure it's monochromatic and Gaussian. And this is going to end up looking a bit like snow. So the first snow that we're going to do is going to be in the distance. It's going to be behind me. So it'll be finer snow um, and denser snow. Let's, so let's try it like this. So now we have all of this noise. It doesn't look like much. Now with this layer selected, you'll go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Now if you can't select Filter Gallery, that happened to me before, you'll want to go to Image, Mode, and then make sure 8-bit and RGB is selected, and then you should be able to go right into Filter Gallery. Once you're in your Filter Gallery, you can kind of poke around and see what looks the most snow-like to you. So uh, your dry brush, for example, all of these white flecks are just going to show up looking rather snow-like. Uh, you can go into textures. You can see that that's just too dense. So you can try out some and, you know, see what works for you. I like to zoom out a little bit down here and just get an idea for what the whole picture is going to look like. Because you can see when you're zoomed in, it might look okay, and then you zoom out and everything might be too close together. So just see what works for you. So I'm in chalk and charcoal, and you just have to play around with these sliders until you get something that looks snow-like to you. So I'm adjusting my stroke pressure, and that's far too grainy. That's a little bit better. And then that makes it too fine. And that's a bit too dense. So just play around with what works for you, what you think looks natural. And it depends on your picture, too. Uh, if you have a landscape and there's, it's a far distance, you know, you might need a super fine snow that's going to go very far in the distance. You'll have to add a lot of different layers. My picture, you know, there's not that much depth to it. So now, hold on, let me show you. So now that I have this grain on this layer, I'll go to uh, screen. And you can see there's speckles here. Now, if they're too small for you, you can go to this layer and do Edit Transform, Free Transform. I'm going to zoom out. And that will make the snow a bit larger. It's all going to be blurry anyway, so it doesn't really matter if you're stretching it out. So that looks pretty good for the background here, and then I'm going to add a blur. So you'll go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and it's already very fine, so I don't want to blur it too much. And then also, you usually don't perfectly freeze the snow. That's why it's very difficult to photograph, is that you want your subject to not be blurry, not have motion blur, but it's kind of nice when the snow does. Usually the snow does have some motion blur to it, so we'll add that. We'll add that. And do that. And again, you don't want to add too much or else it com almost completely goes away. Well, it does go away. And then you can see right now it's going left to right. I guess that would work if you were in a blizzard, but it looks calm. My hair's not really blowing around. Maybe I'll just make it go at a slight angle. 
and you can do that like this. And I'll blur it just a bit less. And next I will add a mask and I'll select a paintbrush and use black, since my mask is white, to erase everywhere that is not the background. Because this is the background snow, I'll add another layer closer to me. I'm being messy. And then you just repeat that again. So we'll name this background snow. And the next layer, just repeat it, go to fill, black, add noise, and this time I'll make it a bit bigger. And go to filter, filter gallery, and you can see these are bigger chunks of snow. And I think it looks more natural when the snow gets more sparse as you go from the background to the foreground, because the background, you're getting more snow in the frame. As you reach the foreground, let's say, right in front of the camera, you might only see a few pieces of snow. So as I'm moving forward, the snow is not only getting bigger, but it's also getting more sparse. You could look at other pictures of snow if you need a point of reference to work along with. Film grain looks too fine. I think I'll try dry brush. And again, I'll zoom out so I can see just how the snow will be covering the frame because I want to make sure it's not too dense or it's not too sparse. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to actually transform it now while I can see it more clearly and just make these chunks of snow a bit bigger. That looks pretty good. And then we'll go to screen. And then you can see we have the second layer of snow and this will be covering me because it's in front of me. Uh, and again, let's go to filter and blur and to Gaussian blur. I like to just kind of scoot this over so I can see what I'm doing. And then I think this layer should have some motion blur as well. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And we'll add a layer mask again. And then I'm going to take the snow off of my features. I left the little on my chin. I think it looks unnatural when the whole picture has snow except for the face. So I'll leave just a little bit on there. Oh, but I don't want it covering my eyes or my mouth. And then next I'll do a different method because right now I like to use this noise method because it's very even. It's, it looks better for the background snow and the middle ground snow, I think. But for the foreground snow, I'd like it to be uh, less predictable, more sporadic, just a few pieces here and there. So I'm going to show you how to make a brush. So go to File and New and uh, let's put this to Pixels. And we can do, it doesn't have to be huge, you don't want it too small, so let's say like 500 high by 500 wide, and we'll call this snow. Well, we're not going to keep it, but okay. And now, everywhere you paint in black, 
that's going to be your snowflakes. You can do one here. Uh, let's see. I'm actually going to kind of make it a bit two-toned because the snow can look a bit flat when it's all just one chunk of white. So I'll just add a little bit of gray. Is that all black? Hmm. And then again, we'll spread these out. Mm, opposite sides so that it looks, you know, less like a pattern. It's a little gray. Oops. I thought that one to be bigger. And then... And then we'll go to Define Brush Preset, and we'll name this Brush Snow. Now, when we go into our other picture, you can see our snow brushes there. We'll change the color to white, and oops, we'll add a new layer, and this will be F Snow for foreground snow, uh, but also because I live in New England, I get I get tired of snow, so we'll just leave that like that. Okay, so if I were to use this now, ugh, that doesn't look anything like snow. So I'll show you how to go in and change your brush so that it'll make things more sporadic. You could do your brush here, or if you have to, you can go into window and, and select brush. So let's see. So brush the shape dynamics. So I'll just separate that there. So this shows what my brush will look like, and then I also like to practice on my picture. So like I said, right now it doesn't really look like snow, but if you do the size jitter, then you're getting all different sizes. You don't just have those two dots that I made anymore. I mean, you're probably thinking, Chelsea's crazy. She doesn't know what snow looks like. Okay, so now we have uh, that. Let's see. Um, we don't want every single snowflake to be perfectly round. So we'll put the roundness jitter on and you can see um, now we're getting these elliptical shapes, but too much. So we'll put a minimum roundness so that it limits that. Let's see here. Let's make it the brush bigger with our right bracket so that we can see. Yeah, so they're not perfectly round, but they're not too strange of a shape. You can see my two-tone colors made it so that one part is brighter. You'll notice that that happens sometimes with flares, so that's why I added that in. And then, how about scattering? So instead of having one line of circles over the others, this will make everything random. Let's turn that way up so that it's totally scattered. And then your count, that would make it more dense. You can see that's very dense. That's a lot of snow. That's a dangerous amount of snow, so I'm not going to do that. And your count jitter would make it so that it varies that amount. And I won't worry about that. Uh, color dynamic, all of that we can we can skip, but transfer, this is an opacity jitter, so that every single spot is not the same opacity. So we'll actually, let's experiment. You can see some are brighter than others, which gives you the appearance of some depth. Okay, so that looks good. And we get smoothing. I don't think you really need that. And then I want to save this as snow. Okay, so now we have this layer. And you can see when you use the brush, it's pretty good, but you can get some overlapping, and that's why I didn't use it for the background. For the foreground, it should be just fine. And like I said, the snow closer to the camera is going to be few and farther between. So you can just add a few. And now we'll go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur again. And then filter, blur, and motion blur. And 
And then I'll add another mask because right away I can see I don't like this big blob. So I'll go into a uh, normal brush. I'll make that bigger with my right bracket. And it's white, so I'll use black too. So I took out that one, and then if there are any others that overlap my face that I don't like, or my jacket, then I can take those out. And then we have these few very soft, nice snowflakes in the foreground, and uh, all the smaller ones in the background, but we're not done yet. You can go back in with your brush, and you can add some more if you want. You'll have to add a new layer. I'm actually happy with how this is, so I'm going to move on. So next, we need to make the atmosphere look kind of cool and snowy, right? There really was snow here, but we'll make it look even better. So let's go to color balance. And... We'll do our shadows first, and we'll make them nice and cool. Let me pull this to the side so that you can see better. And I like them to be a warm color of blue. And then we'll take the mid-tones and we'll cool those off as well. Just a little bit towards the magenta. And then the highlights, you guessed it. We'll also cool those. And then I love the way that the light is hitting the fur on my hood right here. So I'm going to accentuate that. Make a gradient layer. And we'll make it radial. And then I have to tap right here and choose a color. I go for Let's try this. So before we close out, we'll move this off to the side because the light is coming from this side. So we'll make this come from the side. Um, and I'm actually going to move the scale up Oop, too much so that I can move it more off the frame and just have a lighter gradient, a less severe gradient. And then from there, instead of normal, we'll change this to soft light. And then it just kind of changes the color in the background. It warms it without getting that haziness. Uh, if you don't want it on your subject, you can go into the mask here and, and clear it off. So there you have it. That was pretty easy. I added snow and I added cooler, more wintry colors. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more of it, you can just subscribe below and give it a like. I like when you subscribe. We also have a photography book called Stunning Digital Photography and we'll have a Photoshop book out shortly. Thank you.